in worship with you this morning. Everything you need is found in this red hymnal, which should be in the pew in front of you, and you should have received a worship handout with page numbers. You'll notice that there are small page numbers with a P in front of them. Those are towards the front of the book. The Psalms are around the center of the book, and you'll find those numbers on your hidden board right here, as well as in your handout. If you feel disoriented, find a member of Atonement. We'll be happy to assist you. Atonement is a community that is one in Christ, gifted by grace and called to serve. We welcome and gladly include all people as a reconciling in Christ congregation. We renounce all the forces that defy God, the powers that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw us from God. And therefore, we embrace love of all our neighbors in every nation. We embrace the way of Christ, which calls us to love those who differ from us. We embrace the love of all people. We embrace people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. We embrace the work of anti-racism. We embrace the work of feminism. We embrace the work of care and healing. We embrace care for and stewardship of creation. We embrace the work of peace. Here, we are full participants in God's kingdom. Here, you are fully included and embraced. Here, you are a beloved child of God. Let us then begin worship with confession and forgiveness, which is found on page 94 in the front of your hymnal. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our gathered hymn, 532, Gather Us In.
of the Holy Spirit be with you all. to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. 
and Abram journeyed on by stages toward him again. Word of God, word of life. Thanks to be to God. Word of God, word of life. 
pray with me. Mighty merciful God, you have promised us that we shall inherit all things through you. You have assured us of your mercy, and you have come once again so that we might believe and in believing might be made well and have life. Bless us now, that we may receive the good things you have given in your mercy, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, you might have learned the psalm in Sunday school. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. And then we turn into what is it? Uh, hokey pokey? Yeah. Right arm, left hand, whatever. <laughs> what does that song say? It tells me, forgive the male centered language, by the way, it just means children. But it, tells me that from an early point, we teach this, even in Sunday school. 
We are all children of Abraham. Or in the reading from Genesis, Abraham. And in the reading from Romans, we see where that idea comes from. It is not about adhering to a set of practices. It is not about our genetic heritage. It depends instead on faith. That is, believing that God can and will do what God promises. So what are some of God's promises? This is the question and answer part of the sermon. <laughs> That God will never leave us. Excellent. What else? Um, no, no more apocalyptic floods? No, no more floods that destroy all the world, all the creatures that live in it. Yeah, that's the rainbow thing. Also very good. Yeah. What else? That he will always love us. That God will always love us. Yes. Other promises of God. Eternal life. Eternal life. There was the biggie <laughs> that the problem in Sunday school, right? Yes. Eternal life. Life everlasting in Jesus Christ. Excellent. What other promises of God do we have? How about forgiveness? Yes? No. Yes, no. Yes. yes, good. Okay. Forgiveness, okay? How about community? Yes, no. Yes. Yes. How about um, instruction and guidance? Yes, no. Yes. Yes, okay. This is a lot of promises that we're harvesting, right? How about bringing life to those who have died, which is related to eternal life, but yes, right? Bringing life to the dead. How about this one, that God will call into being even that which does not exist if God wants it? Yes. yes. Where are we going back? Genesis 1, last week. God makes what God wants. God calls it into being even if it does not exist. And this eternal life, this life to the dead, who is it for? Who is it that God calls into being? All of us, yes, everyone, all of us are the inheritors of God's mercy. That's what Paul means when he says we are all children of Abraham. Inheriting the promises made to Abraham has nothing to do with material prosperity. After all, how many times have the children of Abraham experienced danger and oppression? The promise to Abraham is the promise of God's gifts, all of which show forth God's mercy. The call to Abraham's children as inheritors of that mercy is to follow their God, their merciful God, into the world that God loves and has mercy on, so that they, so that we, may be a people formed, saved, identified by, and enacting mercy. Mercy. Anyone know what mercy is? What's mercy? Forgiveness, okay? Forgiveness is a version of mercy. Yes, absolutely. Are there other ways you can be merciful than just to forgive? Caring. Caring, right. What else? Mercy is giving people love when they don't deserve it. Yes. Kindness. Yes. Yes. It is doing for someone something good when you have reason not to. When you have reason not to. It is doing something, not because of who the other person is, but because of who you are for them. And in doing so, when you become a merciful person, you are a good person in the sense that you are good for that person upon whom you have shown mercy. It is doing something good for someone when they don't deserve it. It's grace. Grace. And God's grace is God's mercy. And that is how we can trust God. That we inherit God's mercy, God's grace, so that we can believe that our God is gracious, is merciful, is slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And since our God is merciful, how much more will we have mercy on one another? Kindness and caring and compassionate, even when the other has harmed us, even when they have done something wrong, even when things are not right, the answer is not punishment. The answer is mercy. Jesus, healing women, raising children from death, but he also calls what? A tax collector. A tax collector. 
to follow him. Now, a tax collector is not an authorized agent of the IRS. That's what we probably think of. A tax collector, in this context, is a sellout, a traitor, a collaborator with the oppressive evil empire that kills the people and extracts their resources and could care less if they die. Being a tax collector is pretty bad for your neighbors. But God desires mercy, not sacrifice. And Jesus does not have a long talk with Matthew to convince him of how wrong he's been. Jesus instead, he invites, or maybe commands, or maybe pleads, follow me. Matthew inherits God's mercy in Christ, not through his heritage, but through those words, follow me. Matthew and we inherit God's mercy when God calls us to new life in Christ Jesus. It's a story time. Back when I was growing up in the early 90s, in a church, a little German Lutheran church in Trenton, New Jersey, and maybe you experienced this in your context or know of people who did, we thought of following Jesus as something the pastor does. Did you ever think of it that way? I certainly did when I was a kid. I kind of assumed that's what we paid him to do. He follows Jesus, we pay him. That's how it works. Inheriting the faith was something that happened at birth or baptism. It was an over and done with. It already happened. Who cares? Why are you still talking about it? The idea of God's mercy for us was kind of old news. We all knew that God loved us just as we are, and so my experience of Jesus was limited to those who still came to worship the pious old guard, mostly, and who still sang, somewhat modestly, and who still let the pastor direct worship and attended kindly to the pastor. And then they would go and get on with life outside the building, where all the real stuff that mattered. I can't speak for their hearts. I was a kid. I don't know. I never sat down and said, hey, this is what I'm sensing. Is that right? No. All I can tell you is that from my childish perspective, it seemed to me they either didn't believe what they were hearing every Sunday, or they didn't care. If they didn't care about their inheritance, why should I? And if we don't see God's mercy, God's mercy for us as gift, undeserved and present here and now, why on earth should anyone else perceive, care, or believe? Inheriting God's mercy is not a fact. It's not a contract. It's not a document. It's not like your date of birth or your constitution or your driver's license. It's an event that changes life and that life is a journey of mercy all life long. And while I didn't see that in every person in every congregation, I did see that in pastors as I grew up. And not only in their own behavior, but when they invited me, when they commanded me, because that did happen, <laughs> when they pleaded with me to also follow Jesus. And I saw it in other pastors, and in deacons. We didn't call them deacons back then, but that's what they were. And in council members. My mother was not the only one. And even in peers, fellow kids. And they also invited me, and sometimes commanded me, and sometimes pleaded with me to inherit God's mercy. Now, don't get me wrong, God's mercy is already ours. The promise has been made, but that promise depends on faith and trust. When we trust a promise, we act on it. You don't cash a check unless you know you have a check. You don't engage in a relationship unless you know the other person. 
We inherit God's mercy when we act and trust on God's mercy, which is for all of us, all people, the whole world. We inherit God's mercy, yes, in baptism, that washing for all people, which is to include the teaching of Jesus, which invites us and commands us and pleads with us and with people of every nation and language and heritage. And we inherit God's mercy in the Lord's Supper, in that body broken for our brokenness, in the blood poured out for us, for all people. And we inherit God's mercy in the forgiveness of sins, a gift of mercy given without money and without price. And we inherit God's mercy in this assembly of God, gathered as people of faith for one another. But most of all, in and with and under all these things, is the inherited mercy of that invitation, that command, that plea of Jesus. Follow me. That invitation, that command, that plea is the center of the life of faith. God invites us from death to life. God commands us from non-existence into being. God pleads with us from judgment and pain into mercy. And as inheritors of God's mercy, we cannot change it. We cannot stop it. We cannot deny it for ourselves. And so God invites and commands and pleads with us. Let us go from this place to the life that God will show us. Let us go into the world that God loves and live there together. Let us inherit God's mercy and inherit God's desire to seek mercy, not sacrifice. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. <clears throat>
inheritors of God's mercy in Christ Jesus, let us confess our faith. He's in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 104 in the front of your hymnal. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God from not made, a one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and washed aside, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is rich and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Call together to follow Jesus. We pray for the world, the church, and all in need. Inspire the church, O oh God, that it may be a sign of life throughout the world. From the exploration of faith with children and new believers to missionaries and bishops, shape lives of faithfulness so that all find abundant life in your ways. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Nourish your creation, O oh God. Accompany all who plant and water. Bless the work of farmers. Provide for sub 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 and subsistence farmers facing drought and climate change. Guide the work of agricultural scientists towards sustainable ways to feed the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give growth, O oh God, where there seems to be no hope for life. In nations and regions where reconciliation seems impossible. Empower peacemakers with your spirit. Where death holds sway through violence, disease, and hunger, equip relief workers to bring hope. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Nurture all in need. Bring healing to all who experience trauma caused by systems of injustice and destructive relationships. Give courage to those struggling to repent and those seeking reconciliation. Sustain all who work for restoration. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Encourage this congregation, O oh God. Call us to a common purpose and keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts toward you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Thanks be to you, O oh God, for the lives of all who have died in Christ, especially those we remember now. Allow the silence of our hearts. Teach us to follow them in your ways and gather us with them into the promise of eternal life with you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you as you would desire and are able to share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Dear 
friends, I invite you to be seated at this time, and before our, as our table is made ready to receive the offering, and before the elements come forward, um, and we sing our offertories, for all that, few notes. Communion today is welcome to all who believe and are baptized. Any who are not baptized, I invite you to speak with me about baptism. If you're not certain if you were baptized, well, if there was water involved, or your parents told you where you were, come forward. God is merciful. Any who do not wish to commune or wish to commune only in one kind are also welcome forward. You may receive a blessing or simply cross your hands across your chest or touch the vessel rather than receive in your hand the bread and by mouth from Linda or by dipping from the other chalice, right? So two chalices. Linda has a drinking chalice. The other is dipping and that's Diane Armstrong. So that is drinking and dipping, okay? So for me, as you go, the next person will be drinking and the person after that is dipping. We all go with that. The usher will invite you forward as they uh, are able. So please wait for the usher. During communion, there will be also a healing minister here in the side alcove that is anointing for healing with oil. You may kneel or stand as you are able and desire. If you'd like the healing minister or communion to be brought to you, simply let the usher know and we'll be glad to accommodate you. You are a human Lutheran church. Without you, there is no congregation here. There is no institution here. There is no ministry here. You are the ministers here. If you are not yet serving in a way that you feel called to, or you'd like help discerning that call, please speak with me. We're looking for worship leaders, council members, committee members, and chairs. So if you're interested in any work from working with the food pantry, I see Mary and Bastis here today, but they're always interested in new volunteers. Or if you want to work maybe with WHN, Diane Rockwell's here, and she's going to be doing lots of such ministry work all year round. If you want to help us with communication, if you want to help us with administration, if you want to help us with worship, if you want to help us with, with anything, please speak with me. I'd be happy to help you. If you do want to make a fiscal contribution, which would also be appreciated, there's a chest in the rear of the nave. You will see that you can also mail us a check at a street address or use Vanco, the app in your app store, QR code in the newsletter, or you can set up direct deposit with Todd Lutman, who is in the assembly today. Dear friends, thank you for being here. Now, as we give thanks to God, let us sing our offer to you in 691. Thanks. 
receiving what you become, the body of Christ. And as we near we sing together, hymn 814, Take, O take me as I am.
Your friends, I invite you to stand as you are able.
And on Wednesdays in this season of summer, we are having a prayer picnic at 5.30 every Wednesday on the front lawn. Bring your own food, your own chairs, bring food to share or drink to share, whatever you like. We eat, drink, and be merry, and catch up, and we talk about whatever it is that catches fire in our hearts for about an hour, and then we conclude with the service of Holy Communion, abbreviated, at 6.30, ending by 7. So please join us for that. If we're not on the front lawn, it's because of the smoke and smog, and then we're downstairs in the chapel, uh, on the first floor across the bathrooms. Are there other announcements for the good of the assembly? Every announcement. Um, Aaron is graduating from his boot camp and AIT program on um, Thursday. We were going to go down there and attend his turning blue um, celebration. And he will be returning um, by the end of the week on Friday to start serving in the National Guard. Wow, thanks, um, Keith. congregation back in January, the very start of January, uh, with prayers and Godspeed to his initial boot camp. And so he's been out for a while, and he's been doing a lot of work, yeah. So we will receive him with joy, and we hope to receive him with joy when he returns. Thanks be to God that he has been safe and nourished by his journey. Are there other announcements for the good of the assembly? Hearing none, dear friends, I invite you to bow your heads and to receive the blessing of God. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our ascending hymn, 551, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve.
Morning, Sylvester.
her standing on the piano now. Thank <laughs> you. 